all and welcome to YouTube channel Health Q, the place where my mission is to motivate you to look at the brighter side of the health. In today's video, I'm starting a new series for people who are suffering from stroke. If you who are someone who is having a person in a family who is suffering from stroke and is bedridden, then this exercises which I'm going to demonstrate you in today's video would be really helpful. In the stroke rehabilitation series, which are the videos which you would be seeing every Monday, would be focused towards home rehabilitation for stroke. Today's video is dedicated for the people who have recently suffered from stroke and is bedridden and is having very limited movements. So if you are a caregiver who wants to develop mobility, prevent some secondary complications like joint contracture, pressure sores, etc., these exercises would be really helpful for you. So make sure to stay tuned with me in this video series where I would be demonstrating home exercise videos on a progression basis. So without wasting any due time, let's get started. Lift the hand up and down. Passively, make sure to give one support at the elbow and take it up as much as you can. Exercise number two is caption for which you have to bring the hand closer to the body and then take it away from the body. Make sure to give adequate support around the wrist and elbow. Now we'll do exercise number three, which is shoulder external and internal rotation. For this, take your palm, place it under the elbow, hold with other hand the wrist and then rotate the arm inside and then outside. Do this passively for five repetitions on both sides. Now we will do elbow flexion and extension movement. Again, keep hand underneath the elbow and under the hand around the wrist. Bend the elbow and then make it straight. Now we will do this for the elbow forearm where we are going to do the rotation movements like this so passively you will first rotate inside and then rotate the hand outside inside and outside like this now for the wrist movements, again keep, keep one hand for support under the elbow or else bring your body a little closer. Rest the patient's hand on your legs and then hold the wrist in this way. Now bend the wrist down and then up. Two, three, four. We will also passively move all the fingers. So we will do up and down movements of the fingers. So these makes exercises for the hands. 
Now we will do some exercises for the waist for which just lift the leg of the patient and bend it. Bend the other leg as well. Place patient's hand on the floor properly. Place one hand underneath the back of the patient and with your support and encourage the patient to lift the spine up as much as possible. You need to tap lightly to the patient to stimulate that area. And then you can ask the patient to come down. When patient come down, make sure that he relaxes completely. If you feel that there is a lot of spasticity on the leg side, you can place one leg slightly over the patient's foot. You can place it, place your leg this way and then you can ask the patient to lift up and then come down. Again, lift up and then come down. Now we will do the spinal twist for which make sure that there is room for the patient to do this movement. So bring the hands together and then keep one hand at shoulders, a patient's shoulder and then rotate the spine from one side to other side. This encourages turning movement in patient. Two, three, four, and five. And relax. Once this is done, make sure to bring the leg of the patient back straight completely. So this makes exercise for the hands and waist. Now let's move on for exercises for legs. For exercises of the leg, let's consider that this leg, this right side of leg is the affected leg. So we are going to give exercises for the affected side. So the first exercise that we are going to do is passive leg raise. Make sure to place one hand at the ankle, another hand above the thigh region and then give, bring the hands to the side and give a lift as up as possible. Make sure to ask the patient to look at his foot when we are raising it and then bring it down. So right now we are doing all passive exercises that's why there is no need for the patient to do the movements and this exercise is done when the, uh, when the patient is completely bedridden and there is like zero power in his muscles. It is important that he should get the feel of the movements. Two, three, four. And then down. So this was for hips. Now there is one more exercise that we will do which would be not only for hips but also for knee which is the hip knee bending exercise for which again keep one hand below the ankle, another hand behind the thigh region from the side you have to take it up or else you can also keep the hand from outside below the thigh region. So this will give that lifting effect and we need to drag patient's foot while doing this. So you can drag it in this way or else you can place the hand above the ankle and then drag the patient's foot completely and take it towards the body as much as possible and then make the leg straight. So this is dragging exercise for hips, knee and ankle. This gives patient a sense of movement throughout the lower limb. 
again and then pull straight and then again and straight again and straight now moving on to the next exercise which is leg abduction and adduction which means moving the leg inside and outside so now to do this exercise we will be on side of the patient we will keep one hand below the ankle another hand below the hip thigh region we will lift the leg of the patient and then swing the leg inside and out one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then you relax completely. So the swinging action also gives a freeness in the restricted or stiff joints which are at hip region. So doing the swinging action is a very good way to encourage free movements. moving further we will do exercises for ankle region and toe region so we need to do lot of ankle toe movements for the patient so to do this it's important to lift the leg at this point of time so that patient can see the movements happening at the ankle region now to give the sense of movement it's very important to constantly stimulate the skin of patient so just tickle around or it's kind of slightly pinch patient's leg and then with the hand passively raise the ankle towards patient or is towards yourself if you are sit sitting towards patient side and then bend the ankle so we'll do this again for multiple times but minimum you should do this for 10 to 15 repetitions after this we'll also do some toe movements so we'll hold the toe of the patient and then passively we'll move the toes like this doing these exercises at least two times in a day encourages movements in patient neuroplasticity works and patient will gradually learn to use his limbs in a much more faster speed so make sure to do these exercises at home for your bedridden patient suffering from stroke to see and observe faster and better recover so friends these were some of the simple and easy bed exercises to be very specific bed mobility exercises for people who are suffering from stroke i hope you found this video helpful and these exercises easy to perform if you have got any further doubts you can reach out to us by taking a video consultation the link to the website is mentioned in the description box and i'll see you in another video thank you